verimli ekstrüzyon, düşük enerji tüketimi için sürdürülebilir çözümler başlıklı sunum için Battenfeld Sinati adına Ambalaj Bölümü Genel Müdürü Sayın Henning Stiglitz'i kürsüye davet ediyor. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I also would like to thank the organization committee for the invitation and the possibility to give a presentation here. Uh, I hope uh, you are still ready for information, even if we are very close to lunch, because I, I think I have some uh, interesting details for you. Yeah, my topic today will be efficient extrusion or solutions for lower energy consumption. I will try to avoid the word sustainability. Um, my presentation will be structured as follows. At first, I want to give you some information about our motivation, why we are going to analyze the, the process, the energy, energy consumption, and development and um, investigation in the energy consumption. Then I will go ahead with one of the biggest uh, energy consumer, it is the extruder, and the potentials we see uh, with the extruder to save energy there. Um, of course, it is not, um, it's not enough just to look at the single components, uh, you have to look in the complete line. So we develop some new holistic line concepts and uh, the advantages I will show you today. One very important thing is the monitoring. You have to be aware where I consume the energy. And this is what I want to present in my fourth um, point and then at the end I will summarize my presentation. Let me go ahead with, this, with the motivation. Yeah, here what you can see here is the energy consumption, the development of the energy, uh, energy cost, sorry, in, in Germany. It is, um, you see, um, we start in the year 2003 with four cent per kilowatt and at the moment we are at um, 10 or 11 cent per kilowatt. I think the development in, in Turkey is uh, maybe not, not as, the increase is not as big, but I'm sure that in the next years the energy, the cost for energy will increase due to the uh, shrink uh, shrinkage of the resources, the en energy will increase. The other thing is if you look at the efficiency of an extrusion line, you can clearly see that the efficiency, if you have an existing extrusion line, the efficiency is getting better with higher output. And here you see the um, production cost depending on the output. It is for a film, flat film extrusion line. It is just an example. I don't care about the, the numbers. But I think you all know that the efficiency is getting much better if you increase the output of a line. Why? Because uh, all components are running at their nominal points. So then they have the uh, highest efficiency. And it is clear that the production cost decreases with uh, increasing output. Here you can see the energy, energy consumption of an extrusion line. This is an, a flat film extrusion line for thermoforming sheets. And uh, you see the relative uh, proportion of the total energy consumption. And what is clear that you see the different uh, components of such a, or the main components of such a line. And you see clearly that the main drive of the, of the main extruder uh, consumes 64% of the total energy and it's absolutely the biggest consumer of such a line. <clears throat> and if you 
uh, sum up the, uh, the co-extruder. It's a co-extrusion line, the main drive and uh, the main drive of the main extruder. You end up by 90% of the energy consumption is uh, consumed by the drives of the um, extruders. <clears throat> and um, Oh, sorry, 90% of the complete energy consumption of an extruder is consumed by the drive. Yeah. And for the complete line, it's 66%. So it's a huge amount of energy which is consumed by the drives of, uh, of the extruders. Yeah, now let me come to the extruder, uh, which is definitely the biggest uh, energy consumer of such a line. Which potential, potentials do we see to improve the efficiency of such an extruder? Here you can see uh, the energy consumption of two extruders. On the left hand side you see a 120 millimeter single screw extruder standard execution and on the right hand side you see the energy consumption of a high-speed extruder, so-called high-speed extruder, 75 millimeter screw diameter. It is also an example from a flat film a thermoforming sheet. And uh, high speed for us means uh, circumferential speeds above 1.5 meter per second. So for example, for the 75 millimeter machine, that means uh, speeds or RPMs above 400 uh, RPMs. And you can see the efficiency, the increase of efficiency of such a high-speed extruder. So for the lowest output, we have a difference around about 40% in the efficiency. And even for the high output of 800 kilograms or 850 kilograms, we still have an efficiency increase or difference uh, of 10%. So these high-speed extruders definitely helps to save production costs. An additional advantage uh, which comes up, let's say, in the last two to three years is the use of uh, gearless drives. So a torque motor instead of a combination of a motor and a gearbox uh, combination which is, let's say, up to now still the normal execution of an extruder. By the help of these uh, new torque motors, it is possible to increase the efficiency, let's say, by five to, to six percent. Not at the nominal point, but especially uh, in between when you run the line, let's say, with 60, 70, 80 percent, then the efficiency of such a torque motor is much better than the efficiency of a motor gearbox combination. Of course, other advantages are this low noise emission. The, 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 the design is uh, very flexible and uh, very compact. And due to uh, the fact that you do not have the oil, uh, you have less maintenance. Another advantage which uh, smaller high speed or high performance extruders offers is the material consumption when you change from one, one material to the other or from one color to the other. Here you have an example of the material consumption with a 75 millimeter extruder uh, running with an output of 1.5 tons per, per hour. Uh, compared to, uh, let's say, old standard extruder, a 180 millimeter extruder, and you, clear can, you can clearly see the differences uh, of the performance of these two extruders. If you, if you look at the table, okay, the volume inside the extruder is much bigger uh, for the 180 millimeter extruder. The material cons consumption for the color change is tremendously. Here we have 150 kilograms, and here we have 1.3 tons. The time for color change, of course, with 
here we, have, we make two tests with lower output and with high output. And you see that the time for color change is much lower if you use a high performance, high speed extruder than compared with an 80, 180 millimeter standard extruder. Now, let me come to another, let's say, important advantage. Um, it's an example of, uh, let's say, unusual handling, but uh, I hope you, can all, you all can see what's happening here. Uh, here is one forklift, here is the other forklift, and they try to install a dosing unit. Yeah. I think these guys also handle extruders like this. So um, <coughs> what I want to say is that if you look, for example, at the weight for such an extruder, for such a smaller extruder, uh, 180 millimeter, you have 20 to 25 tons. Compared to a 75 millimeter extruder here, you have three to four tons. Yeah. So these smaller extruder offers a lot of possibilities. Yeah, if, if you have to pull the screw or whatever. The maintenance is much easier if you have smaller extruders. Yeah, to summarize the main advantages of these high performance extruders, uh, what we have seen is we definitely uh, need less space. Um, we have lower investment costs, lower cost for spare parts. If you need uh, another screw or an whatever or another feed bush, um, reduce residence times. You can remember the table which I have shown you, faster startups, quick material change, um, quick, quick color change. The handling is much easier, less energy consumption, and at the end, last but not least, better product quality. Yeah, now I want uh, to come to the holistic line concepts. Uh, like I said before, it is not enough to just to look at the single components of, the, of a line. You, you need to have a look on the whole um, line. And here I want to give you an example from the pipe extrusion, where one, let's say, new concept is developed. Yeah, this is kind of energy cycle for us. Um, we start here, we want to have a high output extrusion, therefore development of, of uh, high output extruders, tools, and so on. Then the next step would be an innovative um, downstream technology. Then the high efficient use of the resources of water and air cooling. And at the end, what you get is an increased output and uh, reclaiming energy. Now let's go a little bit into detail. Um, here is an analysis of the energy consumption of a pipe extrusion line. It starts here. We put in energy by the help of the main drive of the extruder. We melt the material. We have blowers on, on the uh, extruders, the, the barrel heat, radiation. We have some losses. Then we put in some energy into the tool. And then finally we made it. We have a nice, let's say, melt tube. And now we have to cool down the melt tube. So for the cooling, we again need energy. Yeah. Here the uh, energy which is needed for the spray buses and vacuum tanks. And then, of course, we also need to cool down the, the water which is used for cooling the pipes. Uh, and at the end, the energy exchange into the environment is uh, a little bit more than we um, put in via the extruder. So I think this graphic shows clearly that it is not enough to concentrate on the extruder only. The total line concept is important for the energy consumption. So we 
make some investigations and uh, the, the, at the end we, we uh, developed a modular concept uh, with three different options to save up to 50% in downstream length and energy needed for within the downstream. Yeah, and this concept consists of um, let's say two to three components. It's in cooling inside the pipe, cooling of the melt, and a complete new line concept for the downstream of a pipe extrusion line. Some more details. Let me begin with the uh, with this so-called EAC system or cryosis system. It is a cooling of the pipe from the inside and a cooling of the melt. Here we have, this is, a, here, this is the extruder, the pipe here, um, all the downstream equipment which you can see here. And yeah, the, this pipe head is cooled with water by the help of which you get out energy from the melt right in the, uh, right in the die. And then we suck air through the pipe to cool the inner surface of the pipe. Um, at the end, you get some air which is uh, heating up. So the air temperature is round about, let's say, 120 degrees. And this air could be used, for example, for uh, drying of the material or using for heating up the building and so on. What can you reach by the help of this kind of systems? Here is an example. It's a pipe extrusion line. We are running uh, a pipe dimension 160 millimeter and a wall thickness 14.6 millimeter. Here is an example without internal cooling. So what you can see here, this is the line, the design of the line, the extruder, die, and then vacuum tank, spray bases, all of, and so. And here you can see the temperature development in blue, the uh, outer layer of the pipe, in red, the uh, center of the pipe, and in black, the inner layer of the pipe. If you do not have an internal cooling, then the inner layer is th that layer which cools down um, yeah, very, very slowly. If you switch now on the internal cooling, you can see what's, what's happening. The uh, temperature is going down, the t temperature at the end is going down dramatically. If I switch back, you can see here, here we had at the end round about 40 to 60 degrees Celsius without internal cooling. And with internal cooling, we only have around about 20 degrees centigrade. So an enormous incre uh, increase of efficiency. So by the help of this, the um, producer can, on the one hand, can increase the line speed by increasing the output. So again, summing up the, uh, summing up the uh, main advantages, the investment costs are comparable uh, to standard extrusion lines due to the fact that you can leave away some spray bases. We have an increased efficiency, higher line speed, reduced length of the extrusion line, reduced material consumption due to more precise wall thickness. This is a very positive side effect improve of the utilization of energy, possible to use standard PE materials instead of these low sagging materials, um, and use for standard polypropylene materials, especially, this is especially important for fiber compounds. We have less environmental pollution, air pollution on the shop floor, and you can use the waste heat uh, to, let's say, f for example, to heat up the material. What else uh, needs to be done? If you look at the complete line, you need to investigate the cooling process. 
Here you can see, uh, let's say, a conventional cooling process. The melt or the melt tube enters here, um, the cooling um, lengths, here's the vacuum tank, and then spray bars is uh, one, two, three. And in standard executions, uh, every bath has its own water supply, and you have one big chiller, which, which cools down the, the water from 20 to 15 degrees, and the amount of water is quite huge, around about 20 cubic meter per hour. Okay, then we, um, there's a new idea to um, improve this process by connecting the different spray buses together. So in this uh, picture, you have an extrusion direction in this, and here's the, uh, here are the two spray buses and two vacuum tanks. So the melt enters here, and uh, the, let's say the cooled pipe leaves the cooling length here. And the water is pumped from one, from the end of the, of the line to the beginning of the line. On which effect do we uh, get by the help of this? Um, it is possible to decrease the amount of water to, let's say, 1.5 cubic meters per hour instead of 20 cubic meters per hour. And the water temperature is much higher uh, than before. Before we had only 20 degrees centigrade when it enters the cooling process, and now we have 60 degrees. So the effect is that you can chill the water by free cooling, and you do not need a, a huge chiller. So the energy consumption is much lower, and this is shown right here. The flow volume in gray, the standard or conventional execution of the cooling length of a cooling line, and in green, the new concept. The flow volume is much lower. The temperature difference from the entry in the cooling, um, in the cooling length and uh, exit is here three degrees, here 20 degrees. So that's why you can use free uh, cooling. And the water return temperature is also much higher uh, than with the conventional um, process. And here you can see the amount of energy you can save by the help of this new um, cooling system. Now let me come to, say, the last point which I would like to mention is the monitoring. It is clear that if you want to um, decrease your energy consumption, you need to know where I consume the energy. And that's why you need to monitor the energy consumption. And if you want to optimize the energy consumption, I think you have to go uh, along this process. At first, you need to have a data acquisition. Then you have to have a visualization of the data so that you can see uh, what's happening in the line. You have to build up a database by the help of which it is possible to analyze the different components and processes. So to find out which is an efficient process and which is, let's say, not so efficient process. And so that you get at the end an optimization of the energy consumption. Which helps is to have uh, a monitoring direct on the machine. Um, therefore, the control system has to be equipped with, let's say, intelli intelligent measuring devices 